Okay, so now we've put the background color for the whole table as white. So when we go back to our web page and we hit refresh, we notice that the table now has a background color of white, but the, the rest of the page has the background color of the image. Now for this image, you got to be careful because here you can see where it says George is my best friend. You can barely read that because the image is the background. But Carl is also very cool. You can barely read it again because of my image being in the background. Now, when you make the background of a page an image or um, something like that, usually it's not a good idea to put words on top of those images. It looks tacky and lousy. So when you use an image for the background as a page, you basically want to create a table that takes up most of the page that has a white background that has the text. You know, here you can read this text real easily because it's just black text on a white background. So, and if you have really light colored ones, like here it's a yellow background with black writing, that's acceptable for small little uh, call out boxes and stuff like that. But for the, the outer border of the main page, you want to generally avoid writing in here. So this is not something we would normally do. I'm just showing you possibilities here on why we would put the picture in the background. So I'm actually going to go up and remove it from our main body tag because it just makes the page look really lousy. So I'm going to cut this because I'm going to put it somewhere else. Okay, so we go back and save our picture, our web page. We hit refresh and now we've got a white background for the page again. Now I just want to show you also that suppose this cell number seven, if we wanted to go put an image as the background for that cell, here's how we would do it. We go find cell number seven and if we scroll down, here we see the seven. So that's, it's in this cell. Remember I told you to put an image, put the attribute inside the TD tag for a cell. So we just type in background equals and then our quotes and we can type in images forward slash Brian 2.jpg and that's going to be the background of the cell now so we first we gotta save it and then so just another little side note here every time you change the code make sure you save the code by hitting file save and then you gotta go back to the page and you always gotta hit refresh that's something you have to do every time because you change the code this page that's already sitting here has the old code with it, so we have to hit refresh. Now you'll notice in cell 7, you see my picture. Now, I can read it, but it's probably very hard for you to read. The 7 here, see right there, that's the 7. It's really hard to read because it's black, and I have a really dark colored picture in the background. So, again, I might want to do this in a cell that doesn't have any writing on top, or I might want to change... Let me just go in for seven and do this for fun. Let's make a white um, font color. So we use our font tag and we use color equals, let me close the tag, let me just go and close the font tag before I forget. I always like to, you know, I like to open the tag and close the tag as I'm doing it. And we only want this to apply to the seven. So we open our font tag, close the font tag. I've got the color in here and the color, remember use the pound, and remember that white was just um, FF, FF, FF. There's six Fs. And black is just six zeros. So uh, remember those two because they're pretty easy and you're going to use them all the time. So I have to go up and save. And if I hit refresh, now we have a white seven. Still hard to read because it's right by my face and you know, we probably wouldn't want to be typing text here, but I just wanted to show you that you can change the font color in these cases, and sometimes you might play with it and find some kind of a gold that stands out against this background. But, again, this is just a picture. This really wouldn't look... You can tell this isn't a nice-looking web page. You know, it's a crappy-looking web page. I'm just using it as a teaching vehicle for you. So uh, I hope you, in, you understand that, and, you know, this is not showing you how to make a really beautiful-looking website. As you can tell, my other websites that I've shown you do look a lot nicer than this because I've spent a lot of time uh, trying to design them, and uh, this one, I'm just showing you how to do things. Once you understand how to do these little things, then you can spend a little bit of extra time to make everything look nice. So I've shown you 
that the attribute is just background equals and then URL. That's the image location. So you can use a relative location like I've done and relative just like images forward slash brian two dot jpg and all that does is that looks inside the images folder and it looks for brian two dot jpg now you could also put in a hyperlink like if you were linking to an image that's hosted somewhere else you could type in like http P colon slash slash www dot rapid it would help if I spell rapid 4x right okay and if that image was hosted in the images folder under brian2 dot jpg uh, at rapid 4x dot com then it would use that picture but that's not where the picture's at so this wouldn't work but you can link to it using an absolute URL but I would suggest that you don't do that, especially if it's on someone else's site, because they could change that image and remove it. And unless you're watching your website, you know, at least once a day, you're not going to catch it for a while. So make sure that you have the image uploaded on your server. So that's why, really, I'm only showing you how to do relative URLs. But when I say URL here, it can be either an absolute or a relative URL. So generally, when you do this, you want to use a relative URL because you want to make sure that image is on your server. And if you do an absolute URL, you're going to want to link through an absolute URL to your own server, uh, to your own website.